Hi, the hymn challenge of the day, week, is I Know Whom I Believe It by Daniel W. Whittle in 1883. Uh, the music by James McGranaham in 1883. And it goes like this. <laughs> I wrote a piece about this hymn back in January 19, uh, 19 or 18, 2021, January 31st, 2021. As I began thinking about verses on confidence, I was reminded of the dear hymn that speaks of my confidence in my salvation through Jesus Christ. I wanted to share a bit of this hymn today. The story behind the hymn. Here, in Major Whittle's own words, is what took place that night. I dropped on my knees and held the boy's hand in mine. In a few broken words, I confessed my sins and asked Christ to forgive me. I believed right there that he did forgive me. I then prayed earnestly for the boy. He became quiet and pressed my hand as I prayed and pleaded God's mercies. When I arose from my knees he was dead a look of peace had come over his troubled face and i cannot but believe that god who used him to bring me to the savior used me to lead him to trust christ's precious blood and find pardon i hope to meet him in heaven years later james granaham put music to many of major whittle's hymns including I know whom I believe it. The chorus of the hymn is based on 2 Timothy 1.12. <clears throat> Paul wrote this letter from his second Roman imprisonment, and soon after he wrote this letter, he was condemned and ex executed in Rome at the command of Nero. Paul sensed this. Therefore, 2 Timothy is not only the last letter we have from Paul, there is also a note of in urgency and passion that we might expect from a man who knew he was soon to be executed. That's from David Music. Last words of confidence. Last words are always important. Knowing that this was Paul's last letter encourages even me that he 
was first concerned about encouraging his men to read. He taught about how he was certain of the faith of not only Timothy, but also Timmy, Timothy's mother and grandmother. It's something to remember that we too should encourage the faith of those around us and those we are mentoring. Then he reminds Timothy to not let t fear take hold of his life because God has given us much more to remain confident. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. When we lose loved ones, at times we wonder, how can we go on? How can we even continue without prayers of a saints to whom we look to for guidance? I'll tell you that I believe the prayers of the saints continue on much longer beyond their death. I've seen it. My grandmother was a prayer warrior. Her prayers still go up and down between heaven and earth. A former pastor shared that he wondered who would pray for him after the death of his mother. Lo and behold, his sister stepped in as an amazing prayer warrior. So don't lose faith. The prayers of the faithful will continue to surround the throne of grace. And don't be ashamed. Paul encouraged Timothy also to be strong in his faith and in sharing God's words with unbelievers. Oh, in these last days, we must remain bold to win as many as possible before his return. Recall that it is only through the blood of the Lamb that we even have faith, and that through the Holy Spirit that men are called to righteousness. We must remain unashamed. Don't water down the gospel Make it to make it easier. There isn't time. We must shed the light in the darkness that only God can make things right and remove sin in our lives. Thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it. Have a blessed week.